Okay, so if you're watching this video, you've already finished this model or this flowchart where we included a decision symbol. What if our decisions are a bit more complex? What if we have more than just two outcomes of a decision? How do we handle that? Okay, let's do another example here. Go ahead and create a new file. Flowchart. BPMN 2.0. Well, that's thinking. Let me show you the one I want to do. Uh, right here. At the Beetlejuice Bungalows Hotel, we provide discounts based on the different membership levels. Okay, they'll have a little card, or they won't have a card. If they don't, they're a non-member. If they do, they could be Dung Beetle, Silver Beetle, Golden Beetle, whatever. What we need to do is find out what room they want, what their membership level, the number of nights they want to stay, and then therefore how much uh, we're going to charge them. So membership level is, a ca is something categorical. That comes in and we're going to need to write into our program that based on which category they belong to, they have different discounts. Um, also room preference, which has a room rate. What I mean by that is when they tell us which room they want, uh, basically they're going to tell us, I want the $100 room, I want the $200 room. Um, to make this a simpler example, let's just assume that room preference is the price. So when, they, when we collect that from the user, we're collecting the price of the room, in other words. Um, so in fact, to make this easier, it might be better for me to just say room price. And then you know that's something we're, gonna we're already going to be able to collect um, in numeric form. So let's develop a flow chart to solve this issue where we have four different possible discount rates um, and some other inputs. All right, whoops. Minimize the wrong one. There we go. Okay, here's a new flow chart. Control A, delete. All right, let's start with our start symbol here. Also, I like my little uh, input processing output reminders. Let's, let's bring those along with us. Copy, paste. Those paste, there they are, clear up there. All right, let's make this a start symbol. Okay, let's minimize that. Perfect. Okay, collect inputs. Now, um, we learned in the last video about the difference between inputs from the user or regular inputs versus inputs from setup. So let's begin by making this work with just inputs and then look for opportunities to add inputs from setup and remove numbers from the, from the flowchart. So let's grab the data box to collect inputs. Always do that. Okay, shift enter. We need uh, to get from them their uh, room rate or room preference, number of nights they want to stay, and membership level. All right, so let's go ahead and add our legend in here. Legend. Uh, now this will be over here. We're going to, let's see, um, room rate equals price of the room. Uh, and n equals number of nights and l equals membership level okay let's add our connector start inputs uh, let's make this a bit smaller save ourselves some space which we'll probably be grateful for later okay next step we've um, We've collected the inputs. Now we need to decide what their discount level should be. So a few ways we can do this. I like to keep my processing logic in one box. So if you remember on this last one, I have processing both here and here. What I could have done instead is said that the discount, well, instead of going back into this one, let me simply move on and say, Let's try to create this in a way to where we only have to perform the processing in a single box, or perform the, excuse me, calculate the total in a single box. So let's start by deciding what their membership level is, and I'll show you what I mean. So we need a diamond. Okay, this diamond's going to say, now here's our problem. In the last example, it was a simple yes, no. It was either more than 12 donuts or it wasn't. Now we need to find out what membership level are there, uh, is there. There's two ways to do this. With processing logic, we can do this with what's called a select case or a decision tree. I'm going to use a decision tree. Either will work, and depending on, well, a variety of factors, really there's no difference in terms of the performance between the two. So I'm just going to stick with one. 
So let me show you what I mean. Let's ask the question, does membership level equal non-member? Or something like that. I'll just put non. Question mark. If it does, then we know that they're going to get no discount. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another variable called D and let it equal discount rate. Okay. And what I'm going to use is a processing box. I'm going to put it, uh, we'll put it down here. All right. So if they answer yes, they are a non member, then I'm going to say that D equals um, one. In other words, we're going to multiply their total room cost by one so that there's no discount. Let's make this box a little bit small. Well, it doesn't matter. Let's just go ahead and connect it. That's the yes condition. Good, it knew. Well, it guessed right. If no, if they're not a non-member, then what I'm going to do is ask another question. And this one's going to say, does membership level equal? Uh, what are my other options? I think it was done. So let's connect this box to this one. And it knows that this must be the treatment for no. All right, then the answer to this question is if yes, then I know what the room rate's going to be. And I'll connect this. I know what the discount's going to be. If it's done, I think it was, where is it? Here it is. If it's dung beetle, it's 5%. Whoops, right there. So in this case, the discount is going to be equal to 0 0.95, or I'll multiply their balance times 0 0.95. Let's go ahead and make this 1.00. Maybe that'll make a bit more sense. OK, so if they're not a dung beetle, then at this point, I also know they're not a non-member. So I've ruled two of them out. So let's grab another decision and say, is membership level does it equal silver? OK, if yes, then we know what that discount's going to be. I think it was 15% for silver, so I'm going to multiply their balance by 0.85. Connect. There we go. Then lastly, do I need another symbol to say, is the membership level gold? So in other words, do I need to do one more of these? Hopefully, if you've thought through this, you'll realize, no, we don't need that. Because if they're not a non-member, if they're not dung, and if they're not silver, then they must be a gold member. So it sort of depends on how this flowchart ends up getting implemented in the code. So as long as the, the cashier or the, or the person at the, at the counter doesn't have some text box that they're entering text into to determine the membership level, where there could be a, a misspelling or something like that, as long as they have a radio buttons or drop down box or something where there's no chance for them to enter anything but these four options, then I don't need another decision symbol. I can simply take another one of these. Actually, instead of doing that, let me just copy this one and say, if they're not silver, then they must be gold. Therefore, make their discount 25%. Or in other words, multiply their total by 75%. Now, I need some way to connect each of these process symbols into one more process box where I actually calculate the balance or the how much they're going to owe. So I don't have anything yet in my legend for that. Let's say uh, B equals balance due, or the estimated balance due if we're giving them this up front. B is going to equal the price of the room times the number of nights times the discount rate. Now I need some way to make each of these process box float into this one. Not a problem. Let's come down here. We're going to need a decision symbol, or sorry, not a decision, a connector. Let's bring a connector in right here. Don't need that A on there at all. Delete. Make that a bit smaller. There we go. And let's connect away. Connect, connect. 
So remember the rules for connector. I can have as many connections coming in as I want as long as there's only one connection coming out. I'm going to have to zoom in, I think. There we go. OK. Let's check and see if we violated any other rules. All right. Process or data boxes have to have one in, one out. Yep. Um, I haven't done my output data yet. Decisions have to have one in and two out. So yes, one in, one, two out, one in, one, two out. These are all followed. Connectors can have as many as they want, only one out. Lastly, process boxes have to have one in, one out. Looks like they've all followed that. And now it's time to uh, have our output from here. So now that we've calculated the balance, it's time to output the results. Once again, we use one of these data boxes. How should we output this? Um, if we're giving this estimate when they're just checking in, we're probably not going to print it. Maybe this time we'll prompt it in a pop-up box or something like that. So prompt balance. We're probably also going to want to give them room rate, number of nights, discount rate based on all of that. And then we'll end. And there we go. Connectors from here to here, and from here to here. OK, that's our uh, flowchart that includes decisions with multiple outcomes rather than just two.